What up, y'all? It's your Mr. Dan Tam Ray Mel. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Thursday, August 17th, 2017, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart dot com or your iHeart phone app, search for the entertainment report and it'll take you to the page. Daniel Craig confirmed that he will return to the big screen as James Bond during an interview uh, on the late show with Stephen Colbert. Uh, Craig said yes after to great applause from the crowd after Colbert asked if he'd be returning. The remarks were the first time Craig personally confirmed he would return for the fifth, his fifth foray as Bond after reports in the New York Times from January that he was attached to the next Bond film, which is, set, is scheduled for a 2019 release. It will be the 25th installment in the long-running series. Earlier in the day, in an interview with Boston radio station Morning Magic 106.7, Craig said he hadn't decided if he'd return as Bond. Uh, Craig said, I hate to burst the bubble, but no decision has been made at the moment. There's a lot of noise out there, and nothing official has been confirmed, and I'm not, like, holding out for more money or doing anything like that. It's just all very personal decisions to be made at the moment. I know they're desperate to get going, and I would, in theory, love to do it, but there's no decision just yet. Craig apologized to earlier interviewers for denying he had not decided. Craig told Colbert, I wanted to tell you. HBO Spain accidentally released the next episode of Game of Thrones Tuesday ahead of the episode's Sunday premiere date. HBO Spain had the sixth episode of Season 7 available on demand for Spanish subscribers to view for one hour before it was removed, the Independent reported. The hour was enough time for the episode to be ripped and shared online through torrent sites. Game of Thrones fans, watchers of The Wall, wrote on Twitter to warn fans about running into potential spoilers as episode 6 of Hashtag Game of Thrones has been leaked thanks to HBO Spain. Please use caution on social media. Spoiler images are popping up already. Streaming portal HBO Nordic, which services Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden, was also said to have the episode available early, the Sydney Morning Herald reported. The sixth episode, as announced last week, features Jon Snow, played by Kit Harrington, venturing north of the wall with a ragtag team in order to capture a White Walker. The Big Little Lies cast is game for a second season, according to showrunner David E. Kelly. The 61-year-old writer and producer discussed the possibility of Reese Witherspoon, Nicole Kidman, and Shailene <laughs> returning on the HBO series in an interview with Entertainment Weekly. Kelly said of the prospect, we're kicking it around. If we feel that the material warrants it, we'll do it. He explained everybody's game for getting back the, uh, getting the band back together, but we want to make sure that we've got the music to justify it. That decision has been made yet, and it'll be story-driven when it is. Big Little Lies is based on the Leanne Moriarty novel of the same name, which was adapted as a seven-episode miniseries this year. Kelly confirmed the second season largely depends on Moriarty, who may have a larger role in future seasons. He says, I'm certainly open to it. I think Leanne, for the book, was game to say, okay, it's your baby, run with it now. But she's a great writer, and she also writes excellent dialogue, so if she wanted to jump over to the screenwriting side of the fence, we'd welcome her. Witherspoon, who plays Madeline McKenzie on the show, previously told E! News a second season is a possibility. She reiterated her interest in the project in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter published Tuesday. The 41-year-old actress says it's sort of up to Leanne Moriarty. She has to figure out if she sees a future for the characters, but we're definitely open to it. Witherspoon is focused for now on her new television series with Friends alum Jennifer Aniston. The actresses will team on an untitled project focusing on a New York morning show. The USA Network announced that the season 7 finale of Suits will also serve as a backdoor pilot for a potential spin-off starring Gina Torres. The season 7 finale of Suits will reunite Torres' character, Laura Jessica Pearson, with Harvey Specter, played by Gabriel Mosh, Mike Ross, played by Patrick J. Adams, Louis Litt, played by Rick Hoffman, Donna Paulson, played by Sarah Rafferty, and Rachel Zane, played by Meghan Markle, as she adjusts to her new life in Chicago. USA Network said, when forced to enter the dirty world of Chicago politics, 
politics. Jessica must rely on her legal wits and valiant relationships from Pierce Inspector Lit to navigate this unknown territory. Torres was written off of Suits in season six when Pearson left the show's New York based law firm Pierce Inspector Lit and relocated to Chicago where her potential new series will take place. Uh, the NBC Universal Cable Entertainment President Chris McCumber said the powerhouse character of Jessica Pearson, expertly brought to life by the incomparable Gina Torres, has won the hearts of television fans everywhere. USA Network is beyond thrilled to work with Gina, Aaron Korsh, and the entire Suits producing team and our partners at UCP to explore the exciting new phase of Jessica's story. Anton Cropper will direct the pilot, executive produced by Suits creator Aaron Korsh and Daniel Arkin. Four men of the Teamsters Union Local 25 in New England were found not guilty Tuesday of trying to extort the cast and crew of Top Chef in 2014. Judges, uh, the jurors cleared the men, including Daniel Redmond, John Fedler, Robert Caffarelli, and Michael Ross for a federal attempted extortion and conspiracy to extort charges after almost 20 hours of deliberations, Us Weekly reported. The Teamsters were charged with trying to extort a non-union production company that was filming episodes of Top Chef in June 2014. The men had set up along with other Teamsters picket lines outside the Steel and Rye restaurant in Boston because the Bravo reality series was filming with non-union workers. Top Chef star Padma Lakshmi had appeared in court to testify against the Teamsters and again stated that she felt threatened when she arrived on set with one of the defendants rushing her to bully her. Uh, Top Chef Judge Gail Simmons also testified saying there aren't many times in my life I can recall feeling that afraid. I thought I could be harmed. Lawyers for the defendants did not put on a defense but successfully proved through cross-examination of government witnesses that the Teamsters lawfully picketed to replace the non-union workers on the set, the Boston Herald reported. A previous Supreme Court decision forbids the charging of union members with anti-racketeering in the pursuit of legitimate labor objectives. U.S. Attorney William Weintraub said in a statement, we are disappointed in today's verdict. The government believed and continued to believe that the conduct in this case crossed the line and constituted a violation of federal law. The defendant's conducted was an affront to all of the hardworking and law-abiding members of the organized labor. We will continue to aggressively prosecute extortion in all its forms to ensure that Boston remains a safe and welcoming place to do business. Notably, Local 25's former Secretary Treasurer Mark Harrington pleaded guilty to extortion charges in December and is currently serving six months of home confinement. Ryan Phillippe hopes people being open about depression will help others cope with the condition. The 42-year-old actor said in the September issue of Women's Health that he doesn't think there's any reason not to talk about depression and other mood disorders. He says, I think people being, fear being stigmatized or treated in a blanket fashion, which is sometimes the response to someone who says, I struggle with depression, but really depression can manifest in a thousand different ways depending on who it is. He also explains, I don't think there's any reason not to talk about it, we can help each other and give tools that, that we learn along the way. Philippe said he personally combats depression by letting go of superficial things and giving himself time and space to focus on his mental health. He shared, I also have issues with patience and depression, and I think about how to focus and steady myself and be kinder and better. Meditation and exercise works for me. Philippe previously opened up about his battle with depression in an interview with, uh, with L in 2015. The actor expressed regret that Ava, his 17-year-old daughter with ex-wife Reese Witherspoon, also struggles with the mood disorder. He told the magazine, you know, depression has been a huge obstacle for me ever since I was a child. As you get older, I think it decreases some, but it, I'm just innately kind of a sad person. The star said, I see it in my daughter. She has it, and I wish to, to hell she didn't. It just, some people do have this pervading sort of sadness. Philippine is known for such films as I Know What You Did Last Summer and Cruel Intentions. He presently stars as Bob Lee Swagger on the USA Network series Shooter, which returns for a second season in July. Bella Hadid says she was so honored to appear on the cover of Vogue Arabia. The 20-year-old model paid tribute to her Palestinian heritage in an Instagram post Tuesday after landing the cover of the magazine's first ever September issue. Uh, Hadid captioned a photo of her cover. Wow, thank you, September issue at, at Vogue Arabia, shot by Mr. Incredible Carl Lagerfeld, which features her in a black leather jacket and a pillbox hat with a veil. She wrote, I'm so honored and proud to be on this cover of Vogue Arabia. 
Arabia, not only to be shot by the one and only Carl, but specifically to represent and cherish my half Palestinian blood from my father and the strong, loving, wonderful Arab side of my family. Uh, she also added, uh, this cover is in honor of uh, Tita Kahir Hadid, my family, and my Arab Muslim friends out there. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of the newest international Vogue, and thank you, Vogue Arabia, for continuing to celebrate and accepting all cultures and customs the way we all should. Vogue Arabia editor-in-chief Manuel Arnanat told the New York Times that Hadid was the perfect fit for the issue. The model's sister Gigi Hadid was accused of cultural appropriation this year after covering Vogue Arabia's inaugural March issue in a habitat. On the outset of Hadid, Bella Hadid is one of the most celebrated models of the time, and she plus she has a link to, with the region, being half Palestinian but also a Muslim. He also added, "The Arab world is not a ghetto; it's a highly informed, international, and cultured region where global stars like the Hadids have a cold following. We champion what goes on inside our borders, but our mission as a magazine is to cover what goes on outside them as well. That is real diversity." Lauren Conrad encouraged her fans to love amid hay by posting a photo of her newborn son this week. The 31-year-old television personality shared a new photo of Liam James, her six-week-old son with husband William Tell, and a positive message Tuesday on Instagram. Uh, Conrad quoted Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the caption, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. She added, I hope that we can all learn to love each other a little more so that our children can live in a world with less hate and more acceptance and understanding. Conrad didn't elaborate further, although her post came shortly after President Donald Trump spoke at a news conference about the clash between white supremacists and counter-protesters in Charlottesville, Virginia, over the removal of a Confederate state uh, statue. Conrad welcomed Liam with Tell on July 5th after announcing her pregnancy in January. She said in the August 14th issue of People that she was hoping for a son. Star told the magazine, I always hoped I would have a boy. Boys are so fun. I was a tomboy. I always played best with boys. When we found out, I was so excited. Uh, she added, I want to be strong and teach him to respect women. The mother-son relationship is so important. Conrad came to fame on the MTV series Laguna Beach before starring on The Hills. Her former co-star Heidi Montage is pregnant expecting her first child with Spencer Pratt. She shared a photo from her baby moon last week. Paris Hilton says she could have been like Princess Diana if it weren't for her highly publicized sex tape. The 36-year-old designer said in the September issue of Marie Claire that her video with ex-boyfriend Rick Solomon robbed her of becoming like the late humanitarian and her other elegant role models. Uh, she said in, to the magazine, it's really hurtful because my whole life I really looked up to Princess Diana, all these elegant, amazing women, and I feel like Solomon just took that all away from me. She explained, I could have been like that because of that tape. I always be judged and thought of as whatever they say about me because of a private moment between my boyfriend and I. I wish I had never met him. Uh, she also added, this is actually the one regret of my life. I wish that I had never met that guy. I could have not leave my house for months. I was so depressed, humiliated. I didn't want to be seen in public. Hilton, who was 18 when the tape was filmed, settled out of court with Solomon in 2004 after he allegedly leaked the video without her consent. She said on Piers Morgan tonight in 2011 that the tape was the most embarrassing thing to ever happen to her. The star told host Piers Morgan, I didn't want to be known as that, and now when people look at me, they think that I'm something I'm not, of one incident one night with someone who I was in love with. She added, it's something that's changed my life forever, and I'll never be able to erase it. It was the most embarrassing, humiliating thing that has ever happened to me in my life. Kid Rock might be required to use his real name, Robert Ritchie, if he continues to move forward on his promise to run for Senate in Michigan in 2018. To appear on the ballot against incumbent Senator Debbie Stabnow, Kid Rock will need to submit enough valid signatures and indicate that he wants to be listed by a stage name. The, the Michigan Bureau of Elections staff would then need to research whether his stage name would be perm permissible, as weekly reported. Michigan's uh, affidavit of identity and receipt for filing states that 
that the candidate, quote, may specify that both his or her given name and middle name and only a middle name shall appear on the ballot or may specify a name that constitutes a common law name in accordance with the Michigan Department of State guidelines. Candidates are not allowed to use a nickname that is not a recognized diminutive of the candidate's given name. Kid Brock announced in July and plans to run for Senate on Twitter alongside the release of a campaign website, KidBrocksForSenate.com. He said, I have a ton of emails and texts asking me if this website was real, KidRockForSenate.com. The answer is absolute yes. The 46-year-old is a self-declared conservative who has endorsed Donald Trump and Mitt Romney in the past. Former New York governor and three-time Republican George Pataki endorses Kid Rock as he likes the idea of the GOP reaching out to non-traditional candidates. Uh, Pataki said while speaking with Syracuse.com, I don't think the Republican Party should limit its candidates to the usual path, lawyers, business people, and doctors. I don't think he is a joke. I think he has every right to run. Pataki tweeted on Tuesday that, quote, Kid Rock is exactly the kind of candidate the GOP needs right now. Mom to be Carly Waddell says her pregnancy was a great surprise. The 31 year old reality star gushed about her little miracle in an interview with Entertainment Tonight after announcing she's expecting her first child with husband and former Bachelor in Paradise co star Evan Bass. Waddell said, It was a great surprise. It was a great little miracle. We took a pregnancy test in Mexico and we saw the thing in Spanish and we were like, What does that even say? So we Googled it. She added, We actually just took a blood test uh, because we wanted to know the sex really fast. So we should know in the next like week or two. Waddle and Bass married outside Puerto Vallarta, Mexico in June after getting engaged on the Bachelor in Paradise Season 3 finale. The couple's wedding aired on Tuesday's episode of Bachelor in Paradise Season 4. Bass told the Entertainment Tonight, it was perfect. I mean, you picture a dream wedding and this was everything that you could ever want and we just feel super honored and so special. Bachelor and Bachelor alums Caitlin Bristow, Jay Roper, Tanner Tolbert, Nick Val, and Vanessa Grimaldi were among the guests in attendance. Waddle shared a series of photos from her big day on Instagram prior to the wedding episode. She captioned a picture Tuesday of herself in her wedding gown. I will never forget this feeling. I'm so happy to be able to share this perfect day with all of you tonight on ABC. Um, she added a snapshot of herself with Bass. So excited to finally call this man my husband. We can't thank all the people enough for uh, helping make this fairy tale come to life. Flipper flop star Christina Elmosa officially filed for divorce this week. The 34-year-old television personality responded to husband Tariq Elmosa prior divorce filing by requesting spousal support and joint custody of their children according to Us Weekly. People report Christina is seeking joint legal and physical custody of daughter Taylor Six and son Braden, who turns two August 20th. She asked the courts to dismiss Tariq's request for spousal support and to hold him responsible for all legal costs. Tariq requested spousal support when he filed for divorce in January. He and Christina had announced their split the month prior after more than seven years of marriage. The pair said in a statement December 12th, like many couples, we We've had had our challenges in our marriage. They added, we are committed to our kids and being the best parents we can be. We'll continue to work through this process civilly and cooperatively and plan to continue our professional lives together. Christina Tariq will continue to co-star on the HDTV series Flipper Flop. Tariq said in an Instagram post in July that he's focusing on being the best dad to his children in the wake of a split from Christina. Star wrote, being a dad is not easy. It takes love, hard work, patience, and the understanding that everything you do today around your children will affect them for the rest of their lives. He also said, my number one goal in life that I will accomplish is being the best dad friend and mentor to my children. I just love them so much, and I want them to live the best life ever. I love you, Tay, and Bray. American pop star Ariana Grande on Wednesday was bombarded with negative feedback from South Korean fans over her Seoul concert held the night before. Criticism centered around Grande's arrival in the country on Tuesday, just three hours before the concert, allowing no time for rehearsal for the show at the Gugachev Side Dome, part of her 2017 Dangerous Woman World Tour. The singer was initially scheduled to arrive in South Korea on Monday, the day before, but came a day later. The singer reportedly did not want to be covered by the press upon arrival and asked Hyundai Card the organizer of her soul show for a private entry. The 24-year-old arrived at the Gimpo International Airport at 5 p.m. just hours before the concert. While she didn't find the time to rehearse, the singer uploaded a short video of herself practicing inside a bathroom at a hospital near the venue on her Instagram 
account. Uh, she wrote, how can you come to Korea just two hours before the concert? Uh, Korean in Instagram user wrote, Malapava posted on the video. Never comes to Korea again at Jerome Kim 10. Local actress Kim Jo Woo, who watched the show Tuesday evening, also vented steam on her Instagram account. Kim Bro, arriving three hours before the show and leaving at midnight, I wonder how much she received for her concert. I wanted to delete Ariana's songs I bought on iTunes for my playlist. Among the tickets sold were 570 dollars VIP tickets which included entry to watch the rehearsals some ticket holders have reportedly asked for refunds as we learned there will be no rehearsal a Hyundai car representative said the VIP tickets were sold through Grande's US management company through an American website it was pointed to Grande's seemingly indifferent attitude towards the audience the pop singer turned out some 20 of her best known songs but rarely spoke in between despite the show being held on Korea's Lib Liberation Day there was no mention of it either due to her belated arrival a pre-show fan meet and greet that had been scheduled was Nick's too. Press coverage wise, Hyundai car representatives allowed zero photo coverage by the media, but promised to hand out photos taken by their staff. Or Hyundai car too was denied access to take photos of the concert by Grande's management due to security reasons. Bang will receive the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award at the upcoming 2017 MTV Video Music Awards. The pop star will be honored for her impact on music, pop culture, fashion, and philanthropy, as well as her stunning video uh, biography that includes music videos for Trouble, Just Like a Pill, and So What, MTV announced. Bang now joins the likes of Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, Madonna, Kanye West, and Rihanna, who have previously taken home the award. Um, throughout her career, Pink has won six video music awards out of 18 nominations, including Video of the Year for Lady Marmalade, Best Pop Video for Stupid Girls, and Best Female Video for Get the Party Started. The VMA is hosted by Katy Perry and airing on August 27th will feature performances by Molly Cyrus, Ed Sheeran, Fifth Harmony, and The Weeknd. Recently, Pink returned to music with a new single titled What About Us from her upcoming seven studio album titled Beautiful Trauma. The project is her first release since 2012's The Truth About Love. Country legend Dolly Parton will release her first ever children's album in September. The 71-year-old singer confirmed in a tweet Tuesday that she will be releasing the album I Believe in You to benefit her Imagination Library of Charity. She captioned a photo on the album's cover art. I'm so excited to announce my very first children's album and am so proud that all of the proceeds from this CD will go to at Dolly's Library. Parton shared details about I Believe in You at a press conference the same day in Nashville. She said it's been, quote, an amazing 50 years since her debut studio album, Hello, I'm Dolly, was released in 1967. The star said, according to People, I'm very excited that now I'm coming out with my first children's album in all those 50 years. I promise of all that, all of the proceeds from this CD will go to the Imagination Library. Parton wrote and recorded all 14 tracks for I Believe in You, which will debut September 29th in digital form and October 13th in physical formats. She says she hopes this album will help her reach a new generation of fans. The singer explained, according to Rolling Stone magazine, it just seems like it was the time to make this record. Since I'm getting so old, I'm going back into my second childhood. She added, these kids, I hope they'll be fans because a lot of them, their parents liked me and they became their grandparents and introduced me to them. I think kids can relate, kind of relate to me like a Mother Goose character. Parton founded the Dolly Parton's Imagination Library in 1985. The program distributes over one million books around the world per month to help promote literacy and a love of reading in children. Lady Gaga will appear for a deposition as part of music producer Dr. Luke's defamation lawsuit against Kesha. Gaga will appear for a deposition pursuant to Dr. Luke's subpoena in this, in, in this action during the month of September 2017, read court documents obtained by E! News. Dr. Luke, real name Lucas Gottwald, sued Kesha for defamation after New York Supreme Court Justice Shirley Kernreich rejected the singer's amend lawsuit against the hit maker in March. The highly publicized legal battle between Kesha and Dr. Luke began in October 2014 when the pop star attempted to get free from her contract under Dr. Luke after she said he raped and abused her. Gaga showed her support for Kesha in February 2016 on social media by posting a photo of the pair with the caption Free Kesha. The Born This Way singer was originally set to attend a hearing on August 22nd after Dr. Luke accused Gaga of being unwilling to sit for a deposition since March. Page 6 reported. Dr. Luke subpoenaed Gaga recently as part of the defamation lawsuit as he believes the pop star has 
has, quote, relevant information regarding, among other things, false statements about Dr. Luke made to her by Kesha, including a series of text messages. Gaia has now agreed to hand over un undertactic copies of the text messages after originally sending them in redacted form. Her lawyer, Oren Snyder, says Lady Gaga has always been prepared to testify so long as reasonable limitations were established. That has now been accomplished. Previously, a representative for Gaga called out Dr. Luke, stating, as Lady Gaga's legal team will present to the court, she has provided all the relevant information in her possession and is at most an ancillary witness in this process. Dr. Luke's team is attempting to manipulate the truth and draw press attention to their case by exaggerating Lady Gaga's role and false, falsely accusing her of dodging reasonable requests. Drake's Billboard Hot 100 streak has come to an end after appearing on the charts for 431 consecutive weeks since 2009. Drake was left off of the music chart after his two most recent Hot 100 tracks, Passion Fruit and Signs, didn't make the cut for the week ending August 26, Billboard reported. The rapper first appeared on the Hot 100, starting with the release of 2009's Best I Ever Had from his first album, So Far Gone. Drake had remained on the chart either through guest appearances or his own songs for eight years until now. The 431 weeks is the most for any musician, putting Drake ahead of others such as Lil Wayne, Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, Chris Brown, and Jay-Z, just to name a few. The 30-year-old also holds the records for most charted songs at 157. Most entries on the Hot 100 by an artist in a single week with 24, and most consecutive weeks in the Hot 100's top 10 for a solo male performer with 51. Drake recently announced during the OVO Fest that he is currently recording a new album in Toronto, Vulture reported. Drake previously rapped about taking a break from the limelight on the song Do Not Disturb from his latest release, More Life. He rapped, maybe getting back to my regular life will humble me. I'll be back in 2018 to give you the summary. And, here are the, and finally, here are the top 10 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 sales charts for the week of August 26. Number 10, DJ Kelly featuring Justin Bieber, Quavo, Chance the Rapper, and Lil Wayne with I'm the One. Number 9, Ed Sheeran with Shape of You. Number 8, Cardi B with Bodek, Yellow, Money Moves. Number 7, Bruno Mars with That's What I Like. Number 6, Shawn Mendes with There's No Holding Me Back. Number 5, Charlie Poop with Attention. Number 4, Imagine Dragons with Believer. Number 3, French Montana featuring Swally with unforgettable number two dj kelly featuring rihanna and brinson tyler with wild thoughts and the number one song on the billboard hot 100 single stars for the week of august 26 Luis fonsi and daddy yankee featuring justin bieber with despacito and as your entertainment report for thursday august 17th 2017 i'm your host mr downtown ray mellow i'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond you can follow the show on facebook twitter or instagram facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.